All right. Well, it is two o'clock, so I would like to welcome everyone to this afternoon's installment of the Farmers of North America webinar series. I'm really excited by the webinar we have for our members this afternoon. I think it really aligns with, with what we can bring uh, in part of our mandate to serve our members and to bring value to your operations. So my name is Blake Wyseth. I work with the member services team here with Farmers of North America. And with that, I would just like to start by introducing uh, the webinar. So today we have a webinar co-presented by Farmers of North America, the Canadian Federation of Agriculture, and the Do More Agriculture Foundation. And we're going to be talking about championing uh, mental health well-being, um, talk more, do more, listen more. So with that, I will just go right into it and briefly introduce our two guests that will be joining us this afternoon. So first, we have Kim Keller, who is uh, one of the co-founders of the Do More Agriculture Foundation. Um, she'll be talking here right away and I will definitely let her elaborate on that introduction, um, however she sees fit and, and give as much detail as she wants. And the other guest we have is Scott Ross, who is with the Canadian Federation of Agriculture. He is the Assistant Executive Director and Director of Business Risk Management and Farm Policy. So with that, uh, we, we do have just a couple of brief housekeeping uh, announcements before we get rolling. Uh, the first is, as with our previous webinars, we will, of course, be recording this and uploading it to our YouTube channel. So you can view it anytime and certainly feel free to share it with anyone who you think uh, might be interested in hearing in the great work that the Do More Agriculture Foundation is doing. And the second item is uh, we, we do have a really packed um, agenda for the 30 minutes um, and so I'm not so sure if we will have time for questions. Um, if we do, we would just ask you to kindly reserve those to the end of the presentation. There is of course a chat function um, where you can just type those questions in and I will definitely uh, do my best to moderate those. Um, and, uh, and if we do have time, we will gladly take those at the end. Um, the other thing I will say is we're definitely happy to continue the conversation even after this webinar is finished. Um, by all means, feel free to call in to Farmers of North America um, at our main line and, uh, and we will definitely be happy to keep talking. So no worries there. Um, and, and to get going then, um, I'll just put it to Kim. So Kim, thanks again for joining us here this afternoon. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about um, an introduction on what the Do More Agriculture Foundation is all about, maybe how it came to be, and, and just a brief overview of what you folks do there. Sure. So, uh, Do More Agriculture Foundation is a Canada-wide not-for-profit, and we focus solely on um, mental health and agriculture. And we have four founders. It is myself, Manchu Singh, Leslie Kelly, and Kirk Myers. And we actually formally launched January 30th of this year. And it was in a response to, um, I guess, a few incidents that we had heard about of farmers taking their own lives. And um, last summer, I received a message uh, from someone I had never met. And they shared with me that they had actually just lost a farming client to suicide. And he was looking to see if I knew of any way that he could help the family, as well as help his other farmers. And at that time, there wasn't anything that I could give him that I thought would help in that moment. And that's when um, we took the conversation to social media and really talked to agriculture and said, you know, we really have to take this on our shoulders and we as an industry have to do more. And that conversation really started to snowball and really started to take off. And we saw more and more people in the industry actually having these conversations um, in and amongst themselves at the supper table. Um, at conferences and at different meetings and we decided that uh, this had to be a priority discussion for many years to come and it needed to be focused on by the industry so we decided to start the Do More Agriculture Foundation um, and we really operate under three pillars uh, the first being creating awareness and building uh, capacity within communities really towards breaking that stigma that exists around mental health, uh, mental illness in agriculture. The second is around building that sense of community where people who are impacted and affected can connect with each other as well as find resources that are relevant to them. And the third being around research. So 
funding, supporting, sharing research that's happening and making sure that that primary producer's voice is always heard uh, within those research um, projects that are happening. Perfect, that's great. Thank you very much for that introduction there. And now I will put it to Scott. So Scott, if you can um, just uh, if, introduce uh, ourselves a little more if you, if you see fit. And also, I understand that the Canadian Federation of Agriculture has recently signed a strategic partnership with the Dumore Agriculture Foundation. So uh, maybe you could just fill our members in on what that's all about and the, and the important work that you folks are partnering on. Sounds good. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Can you hear me okay? I think so, yeah. Yeah, all good. Okay, well, um, I'll give you a bit of a background um, from the Canadian Federation of Agriculture's perspective. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the CFA is Canada's uh, largest general farm organization. We're an umbrella group uh, comprised of members from across the country that are both provincial general farm organizations and uh, national commodity groups as well. And we represent approximately the 200,000 farmers across Canada. And primarily our efforts are focused on unifying the voice of agriculture at a national level, giving farmers a common voice on uh, policy issues that are common to the sector, and making sure that the voice of farmers is heard in Parliament and uh, in national departments as well. And Mental health has been an issue that for a long time we've been hearing about from our members. And I think, to be fair, uh, we were at a bit of a loss as to how to move forward on it. It kept coming up in conversations and we hear tragic stories um, similar to those that, that Kim mentioned already. And uh, as an organization really focused on policy development, we were um, undertaking an effort to update our policy and make sure we were keeping mental health on the agenda in terms of rural health discussions, but at the same time, hadn't really undertaken any uh, tangible initiatives in that space. And leading up to our annual general meeting for this year, um, there was a decision by our board to organize a seminar or a symposium on mental health awareness, looking at the issue, understanding how it's impacting farmers across Canada, and also then looking at what are the supports that are required uh, to help address the issue. And, and we really began uh, at a bit of a loss, as I said, on that front. And what we did was put a call out to our members asking them what initiatives they were aware of taking place across the country. And somewhat uh, serendipitously, uh, all of this was taking place at exactly the time at Dumar Agriculture was just coming uh, into being. And it, it was a really opportune moment in time for us to, to invite Kim out to the discussion I know she was already closely involved with some of our member organizations uh, through APAS, I believe. And and in discussions about where to go next on this, and, and you know, we we spent uh, a good morning, a half day, hearing stories about how this was impacting farmers' lives, uh, and then looking at what our member organizations and a number of others are doing across Canada to really uh, see this uh, issue addressed in their local communities. And there was a pretty consistent message, I'd say, across the board that, you know, more needs to be done and resources are a major struggle. And we heard this in some of the lead up and, and began a conversation with Kim about what we could do uh, in partnership to, to help address this. And one of the uh, areas our board had really uh, identified as a, as a point of interest was our, our recently deceased former executive director uh, really was personally committed to the issue of mental health. And there was an interest in, in striking an initiative in her honor uh, that dealt with this issue. And one of the things we put together and are still sort of in the, in the initial stages of rolling out for next year is uh, something we're calling the Bridge Revoir um, Champions of Agricultural Mental Health Award, which is really putting out a call to um, our, org our member organizations to nominate initiatives they see across Canada uh, tackling the issue of mental health and agriculture. And you'll hear a lot more about this over the coming months as it, it gets a little uh, further fleshed out. But the idea here is really to, to build awareness, promote what we see as best practices and good efforts in this space, and see what we can do to keep the conversation going and, and really raise awareness of the issue uh, at any uh, facet or any way we can. 
Um, so that was one of the first elements where we uh, looked to do more agriculture, given all the great attention they're getting and uh, the great work they're doing in this space as to how we could work together and struck a promotional partnership to work with them. Um, and a number of other organizations have since stepped up to help support promotion of this award. And again, I think you'll see a bit more of that promotional campaign rolling out into the fall. The second aspect of our partnership, uh, which we signed as an MOU at that event in February was something that's a little more long-term in nature and was really a, a partnership about fundraising for mental health research. And the reason this is a bit more long-term in nature uh, is we very much recognize at CFA that we're not experts in, in mental health and there's a lot of great people doing great work here and a lot of I think right now a lot of excitement about uh, the attention this issue is finally getting. Um, and we're keen to make sure we're not only not stepping on others' feet or being redundant in what we're doing here, but making sure that if we're going to devote our attention and energy to raising funds on this issue, that they're going to the right uh, direction. And so at, at this point, that other aspect of the partnership we've signed is a little further off down the road. But the idea is really to look at, again, a promotional campaign that we can undertake to fundraise for mental health and agriculture. And one of the things we're really looking at is, is just how to structure that. Uh, and I think you'll see over the, the next year or so a little more clarity on that front. So I think from CFA's perspective, we're very much uh, in this for the long haul and want to play a leadership role in driving the conversation forward. And uh, we were just really pleased with all the um, energy that Do More Agriculture was able to get going and has continued to build upon and we're really excited to see all the partnerships that are coming uh, subsequent to that. So it's a, I think a, a really important time uh, for discussions on this subject and we're certainly uh, really pleased to be a part of that. So I'll, I'll leave it there for now, Blake. No, that's that's very good. Thanks, Scott. Um, something that really spoke to me out of that is just uh, your desire to really support the experts, um, how you said it. So, um, you know, we don't all have um, necessarily all the information, but we do have organizations, thankfully, that are that are working on that. And so it's great to be able to help out and support that work, something that um, we all we all need help with for sure. Um, so let's uh, now move on to the next portion of our webinar where we're going to move into kind of a Q&A style session, um, really just to explore um, what this is all about and, and some of the issues that are happening right now. So Kim, just a couple questions for you to, to lead off, two-part question. Um, can you speak and tell us about what is mental health and then in contrast, what is mental illness? Absolutely. Um, so I think one thing that's important to note is that I'm not a mental health uh, expert, and this is information that I have gathered from mental health experts and mental health professionals. Um, so if there's more questions around, you know, the some of the more technical information, I would have to, you know, direct you to some more resources. But just to kind of really, really simply put is, um, so mental health and mental illness are often used synonymously, but they're not the same thing. So mental health is actually a part of each and every one of us. And the mental health, um, sorry, the World Health Organization uh, defines mental health as a state of well-being in which every individual realizes their potential, uh, can cope with normal stressors of everyday life, uh, can work productively, and is able to make a, co a contribution to his or her community. So mental health is an essential part of our makeup. Uh, mental health isn't a choice. And it's not something that we choose to have or not to have. And it's not something that one group of people have and another one doesn't. So mental health does not discriminate. It doesn't matter uh, where you live, what you do, um, or your economic status or where you grew up. Uh, mental health, just like physical health, is a part of each and every one of us. Mental illness, on the other hand, is not something that everyone lives with and may not actually uh, directly affect each and every one of us. So approximately one in five people in Canada live with mental health, uh, live with a mental illness uh, throughout their lifetime. So mental illness refers to a wide range of mental health conditions or disorders that can affect your mood, thinking, and behavior. Uh, so some examples can include uh, depressive disorders, anxiety disorders, schizophrenia, eating disorders or even uh, addictive behaviors or addiction disorders. It can really be caused by one variable or 10. 
when we're thinking about health, it's really important that we're thinking about our whole health. So health is really made up of your uh, physical health, your social health, and your mental health. And those three areas um, of your health have to be taken care of and have to be uh, uh, you know, a part of our outlook in order for us to actually be considered healthy. Because right now I feel that we're in a position where if we are free, if we're free of a disease or illness physically, we think of ourselves as being healthy and we're really possibly forgetting two really important aspects of our health, which is our mental health and our social health. Very good, thank you. Um, and for the next question then, um, since the foundation has been operating, what barriers have you observed that are specific to farmers? Uh, what are they dealing with? And what are some of the challenges that you, you are tackling specifically? Right. So um, we really see we're really kind of putting these barriers into three main buckets that we're that we're addressing immediately. And by immediately, I mean in, in our first year of operation. And the first the first barrier we see is the current culture of agriculture. So the current culture is that uh, the farmer who is usually we visualize as a guy is uh, strong and tough and never shows any emotion unless it's anger because anger would be seen as, a, an, as an acceptable emotion. But that they never require any help when it comes to how they may be feeling mentally or emotionally. And that, you know, we see them reaching out for help or seeking professional help or even talking about it as a weakness, uh, when simply that's not true. And so we're really trying to break down that barrier and change the culture of agriculture to one where every producer feels um, supported and encouraged and actually taking care of their mental well-being. A uh, second uh, barrier that we see is just a straight you know, lack of understanding of what mental health is and how it actually applies to each one of us and how it is a part of each and every one of our lives. So it's just growing that baseline knowledge around what mental health is, uh, what it means to each and every one of us, and then what it means to us as an industry and how we can actually take care of our mental health. And the last one uh, would be isolation and maybe lack of access to resources that we're seeing. So farms aren't located in, in urban centers and um, our access to resources uh, aren't the same as someone that may be living in an urban center as well. Uh, we spend a lot of time on our own and that's usually um, you know in a piece of equipment and we may or not be in cell service so that really poses uh, a risk or um, an issue when you're talking about you know seeking seeking professional help, whether that be, you know, calling a crisis line or even having um, a counseling session via phone, or that is even just having a conversation with somebody about what might be happening in your day. And that can amplify the feelings of, you know, I'm the only one experiencing this. So those are some of the barriers that we are actively trying to break down right now. Good. Thank you. Um, as I was researching for uh, this webinar, I, I did some look on your website that you folks have there, and I noticed that you have a study referenced uh, from the University of Guelph with some pretty interesting statistics. Um, you did reference one in your introduction, but I'm just wondering if there are any other statistics um, that you've come across, maybe in that study or elsewhere, that uh, really have struck you and how that might impact us. So, um, Dr. Andrea Jones Bitten um, and her team at the University of Guelph, they conducted the National Survey of Farmers Mental Health, and that ran from September 2015 to January 2016, and that included farmers, um, more than 1,100 farmers across Canada and across different sectors of agriculture, and they found some things that were really surprising, um, and a couple of, of, you know, one thing that really stood out to me. And this really speaks to how the stigma uh, can affect um, the conversation around mental health, is that 40% of us uh, would feel uneasy about seeking professional help because of what people might think. So that is something that I think that we need to address. Um, but on the flip side, that also tells us that 60% don't care. Uh, 
they don't care if someone, uh, what someone might think if they, if they do get uh, professional help. So, you know, my thinking is how do we take that 60% and turn that into 100%? You know, how do we make 100% of producers feel comfortable in uh, seeking that help? Thank you. Um, my next question, something certainly um, I'm personally interested in, I, I trust many of our, our members are as well. Um, if, if we think we may be interacting with someone who is um, struggling with different mental health issues, how is the best uh, way for us to help? What What is some quick points that we can, can uh, take? Yeah, so uh, this is something we get asked a lot. And I know that it can seem incredibly intimidating, but honestly, if you if you see someone who has, you know, over a progressive period of time, deviated from their normal. So if you know someone that every Friday or every whatever day it was, went out and met with, met with their peers, and they were really involved in the community, and all of a sudden you see that they are withdrawn um, and there something just isn't seeming that they're that they're feeling them you know feeling like themselves it is okay to go to them and say hey I've noticed some changes in you and I'm I'm, I'm a little bit worried and I'm just wondering if you're doing okay or, or if you'd like to talk and just sometimes asking those questions um, is enough for someone to open up and maybe share some of their experiences of, of what they're going through so it's just simply asking the question, you know, are you doing okay? Do you want to talk? And just, you know, if if you're seeing if you're seeing um, those changes in someone, it's okay to even say, you know, hey, I haven't seen you around lately, and you you, you know you have been in the past, like you know, what's going on? Talk to me. Um, I think that that can be our our biggest tool in actually starting that conversation. Great. No, that's uh, it's very good. Simple uh, piece of information we can all implement definitely. Um, and, and where is a good place to go for resources? Um, you know, I noticed there's there's plenty on your website. Is that a, a good recommendation you have? Or uh, definitely, you can go to our website, uh, do more .ag, and go to our resources tab. And that is by no means a complete list of resources. Um, however, uh, that is a really good place to start. There is things on that from training and education that people can take uh, and just basic information as well about, you know, what mental health is, how do you start those conversations, how do you have those conversations. There's a lot of information uh, to get in there. Perfect. Um, I actually had the opportunity to hear you one other time at a meeting I was at a couple months ago and you referenced um, mental self-care. Um, I'm wondering if you can explain to us what that is all about. Sure. Uh, so self-care. Self-care might have a bit of a, a stigma around it itself actually. You know when we think of self-care we think of maybe something that doesn't apply to us because it's usually referenced as you know do yoga and meditate but really what self-care means is it means just taking care of yourself and the the most important part of that is it's taking care of yourself so it's what applies to you what can you do to take care of your of your well-being and it's maybe not just your physical well-being but your mental well-being as well and as we know they're all intertwined so just some really quick things that we can do is um, even stretching for five minutes a day can make a huge difference on both your physical and your mental well-being. And I know you might think, oh, I don't got time for, you know, five minutes of stretching. But there are different stretches that you can do, you know, when you are in a, in a piece of equipment. And they can just be as simple as five minutes. And self-care can also be, you know, taking the time to stop for that 10, 15 minutes and actually eat your meal while you're stopped. Uh, instead of trying to eat it, you know, as you're going down the field. So there's simple things like that, going for a walk. And I know that we think, ah, oh, we walk enough. Uh, but it could be something as just taking an extra five minutes and just walking around your piece of equipment after you're done filling. So those are some really, I think, simple and 
pragmatic ways of, you know, self-care, but there are things like meditation and there are things like yoga um, and there are different apps and programs available that can actually help you work through things like meditation. If you're having trouble sleeping, I mean, sleep is hugely important. And during the busy times of the year, lots of times enough sleep isn't an option. Uh, so we start to think of how do we make the most out of those hours of sleep that we have? How do we make sure that when we finally get to bed, uh, that we're able to fall asleep right away? And one of those ways can be meditation. And it could be as simple as, you know, five to 10 minutes of guided meditation uh, could actually help you have, you know, a great, a great night's sleep. Perfect. Um, another related question, uh, a term that I've been recently introduced to as well is, um, is mental first aid, mental health first aid. Can you explain what that's all about? Sure, so mental health first aid is a certification. Uh, it's a two day course. And um, I, I compare it to physical first aid. It, uh, it does not teach you how to be a therapist. It does not expect you to be a therapist. It doesn't teach you how to be a doctor. It doesn't set those expectations. But what it does do is it teaches you the basic understanding of mental health, um, different mental health challenges, different mental illnesses, and how to possibly recognize signs, uh, as well as some uh, interventions. So what happens if you, uh, if you or someone you know is experiencing a panic attack? How do you handle that? How do you walk that person through them before um, professional help actually arrives? So um, it's a fantastic course and um, I have heard it I have heard people say it is the most valuable training that they've had uh, throughout their life and that they've been able to put what they learn into practice basically immediately and um, usually we put it into a practice on ourselves thank you um, as I'm looking at the time here, I can't believe how time has flown. Um, so we're just going to continue on with the questions. Um, one that I for sure want to get in is how can we, um, as farmers, support the work of the Dumore Agriculture Foundation? I think the most important thing that we can do as farmers is um, we can talk more. So let's talk about mental health. Um, this doesn't just mean sharing your personal experiences. However, that is an incredibly powerful way to do that. It's also just using the using words like mental health, like mental illness, um, in everyday conversations so that they're not awkward to say and those conversations aren't awkward to have. We need to get to a place where talking about our mental health is as easy as talking about our physical health. Um, we need to ask more. So, and that's two parts. We need to ask more questions about mental health and how it, it applies to us. Um, but we also need to ask more people, you know, how are you doing? And we actually need to ask that in a genuine and, and compassionate manner. And we need to start being able to be okay with asking people if they're okay. And lastly, it's listen more. You don't need to be an expert to listen as a friend, a family member, or even a stranger. And sometimes being that ear to listen can go a long way to having a positive impact in, in, in someone's life. And if we can do those three things, we are going to have a massive impact um, within our own industry. Perfect. Great take home message for sure. Um, it does look like we've had one question uh, from the audience on the chat function. Uh, before I address that, Kim, any any words you would like to pass on, kind of putting you on the spot here, um, but is there anything we haven't really covered yet uh, that you feel is really important to share? Um, I think the most important message is that um, in whatever someone might be experiencing, you're not alone and that there is um, an, an entire community here with you. And um, I know we tell people who might be experiencing a mental health challenge to reach out and get help. But I think that there's also an opportunity for us who may not be experiencing that issue to also reach out to them uh, and help as well and really making sure that we're educating ourselves and we're being there to, to, be, that, to be that support network. 
Perfect. So going to the question we had on the floor, uh, we had someone ask, um, has there been an increase in call volumes to the farm crisis line uh, lines across Canada over the past six months? Uh, not sure if uh, if you might know that, Kim, but uh, can you speak to that at all? Yeah. Uh, well, I am actually waiting for some information from the farm stress line here in uh, Saskatchewan. Um, but what I did find out was that um, last year, uh, in the month of July, they had, uh, I think, zero or one or two calls. And once we actually started to promote the farm stress line and get that information out, uh, their calls uh, went up to, I think, 35 or 36 uh, for that month. And I'm hoping to get more information so that we can actually uh, share back to, to the industry the impact that um, talking about it, promoting these crisis lines uh, has has had and uh, basically I feel like that once we have more information we'll actually be able to do more targeted uh, um, promotion of these lines to ensure that they're being used and that people are aware of them and, and using them. Perfect. So with that um, I am looking at the time and just wanting to respect everyone's time for sure. We are going to bring this, this session to a close. Um, I feel like we've got some great information so thanks very much to Kim and to Scott for just filling us in. Um, but we, we have scratched the surface, I feel like, in a way, too. So let's keep the conversation going. Um, again, this webinar is uh, it has been recorded. It will be archived shortly. Um, and you can certainly view it later. You can share it uh, with whomever. And, and certainly feel free to call in. Again, uh, we, would, we at Farmers of North America, uh, one of the ways we can serve our members is being there to talk and to listen. So by all means, give us a call. We'd be happy to talk. And, um, and with that, I want to again thank Kim and Scott. And we will conclude this session. So thank you very much, everyone. Great. For thanks for having me. You bet. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you. Have a great day. Yep. Yeah.